Here's another example of integrating using partial fraction decomposition. And you should try pausing this and see if you can complete the problem or at least see how far you can get before watching and seeing how it works. But again, the majority of the process is the algebra of decomposing this rational function, x squared plus 2x minus 1 over x cubed minus x into its simpler partial fractions. Once we do that, the actual integration step will be pretty quick and easy. Again, we're gonna start by factoring that denominator as much as possible. So the numerator will leave as is. There's no need to factor it. It wouldn't hurt to do so, but there's no need to do so. The denominator though, when we start factoring, the first thing we'll notice is that we can pull out an x leaving x times x squared minus 1. And then x squared minus 1 can be further factored. Either you could recognize that as the difference of squares, or you could think about what two values multiply to negative 1 and add up to 0 so that there's no x term. So if they add up to 0, they have to be the same positive and negative. And if they multiply to negative 1, they should be positive 1 and negative 1. Again, if you happen to recognize that that's a difference of squares, you could get there even quicker. So once we factored it, that's step 1. Step 2 is to write the form of the partial fractions. These are all linear factors. There's no repetition. So again, each one of those factors will get its own partial fraction. and then the left side we'll write down with the factored form. So that's step two, to write down the form of the partial fractions. And then step three will be to solve for a, b, and c. Again, to do so, we're gonna multiply both sides by this denominator so that we can clear out any fractions. And this generally works because the right-hand side, all of the denominators are components of this full common denominator. So it's always gonna to work to clear those out. When we do this, the left-hand side just leaves its numerator, x squared plus two x minus one. On the right-hand side, a over x, that x will cancel with the x in this denominator. So we'll just have a times x plus one and x minus one. On the second term, the x plus one cancels. So we have b times x times x minus one. And on the third term, the x minus one cancels. So we have c times x times x plus one. Again, you could solve this by expanding out the right-hand side and equating all of the x squared terms on the right with the one x squared on the left, all of the x terms on the right with the two x on the left, and all of the constants on the right with negative one and then from that system of three equations, you could solve for a, b, and c. But I prefer, again, to pick test values. And again, we're gonna choose ones that will make our lives as easy as possible. On the right-hand side, there's an x factor in several places. There's an x plus one in several places, and an x minus one in several places, which tells me the easiest values to use will be zero, one, and negative one. Once again, I could choose any three values I wanted from all possible numbers, but these three will make the algebra as simple as possible. When we plug in zero, the left-hand side just leaves us with negative one. And on the right-hand side, these last two terms are gonna drop off because they have an x multiplied in there. So the zero is gonna cancel those out. The only one that remains will be a times one times negative one. So we have negative one equals negative a, or a equals one. When we plug in one, the left side gives us one squared plus two minus one, or two. And then on the right side, the terms that have an x minus one factor will be canceled off. So the a and the b terms are gonna disappear, just leaving c times one times two. 
So 2 equals 2c, or c equals 1. And lastly, when we plug in negative 1, the left side gives us 1 minus 2, which is negative 1, minus 1, which is negative 2. And then on the right side, anything that has an x plus 1 in it will disappear, meaning the first and last terms. So all that's left on the right side is b times negative 1 times negative 2. So negative 2 equals 2b, or b equals negative 1. Which means that this rational function that we started with can be rewritten as 1 over x minus 1 over x plus 1 plus 1 over x minus 1. So if we want to integrate this complicated function, we can do so by integrating these individual simpler fractions. 1 over x, of course, integrates as natural log of x minus the natural log of x plus 1. And again, that's a quick u substitution problem, but it's simple enough and easy enough and familiar enough that I won't go through it again. And then the last one is also the natural log of x minus 1. So make sure that you're comfortable with that. Don't try to do these shortcuts unless you're really comfortable with the u substitution. But having seen it before and having practiced with it, uh, hopefully we can skip through some of the details at the end of this long problem. After having done all of the algebra, we don't feel like taking time to do more steps if we can avoid them. So again, the bulk of the problem is the algebra of breaking this down into partial fractions. Once we do so, the integral is a familiar one.